Hi, I'm Allie. And I'm Becky. We are registered dietitians that are passionate about using food as medicine. In this video, we are going to be talking about food and supplement solutions for painful periods. Yes, once a month, women will experience a menstrual cycle if they are not pregnant and they are of a cycling age and if they have hormone balance. Often we see in mainstream medicine a menstrual cycle being overlooked and silenced when there's painful periods through hormonal birth control. Hormonal birth control will create a placebo-like bleeding, but doesn't really regulate the uterine lining of a woman and also doesn't optimize women's hormone balance. So we want to talk to you about if you're having discomfort in your cycle, instead of putting a band-aid on the volcano, if you will, how you can reduce inflammation, regulate your hormone balance, and ensure you have good micronutrient support so that you don't dread every monthly visit from Aunt Flo. In fact, in our initial intake, when we are seeing a new client, we will ask 10 to maybe 12 plus questions just about women's cycles. Are they painful? Are they irregular? Are we seeing spotting in between cycles? Are we seeing cramping and other discomfort like breast tenderness? And this can really clue us into hormone dysfunction. But let's talk a little bit about how we can support maybe first off that pain, that cramping. Yes, so the first thing we need to understand is your menstrual cycle occurs when there is a drop of progesterone. This actually indicates to the woman's body that there is no implanted egg and we need to go ahead and shed that uterus uterine lining so it doesn't build up and get too thick. In order to shed the uterine lining, the body releases a surge of pro-inflammatory chemicals like cytokines and prostaglandins. So one way of approaching painful periods is taking a multifactorial anti-inflammatory approach. So we have three different supplements and some food as medicine solutions to reduce the pain by regulating the inflammation. And the first one that I lean into is omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3s are fabulous in tonifying women's hormone balance in general, and they do regulate the inflammatory response especially the EPA component of an omega-3 fatty acid. So we go for our EPA DHA extra, and we recommend women to take two daily throughout their entire cycle, but as we approach the tail end of the cycle, so maybe if you're cycling 28 days, at around day 25, I would have you ramp up to four capsules or double down on your omega-3 fatty acids. This ensures that at day one of that menstrual cycle, you've loaded for about three to four days a double dose and that'll reduce the inflammation. This is also a time to lean into wild caught fish. So maybe doing a skipjack tuna salad and half of an avocado or leaning into wild caught salmon. Awesome. And then next up, we want to focus on turmeric as a really potent anti-inflammatory food. So we can increase turmeric in the diet. We've got our little turmeric shooter here uh, that's made with lemon, ginger, and turmeric. And we also have our super turmeric, which really works in place of like that mydol or Aleve or Advil that we might take for those painful periods and cramps without all of those unpleasant side effects of potential liver or kidney or gut damage. Yes, it's pretty much your go-to to replace like Aleve or naproxen sodium. You can check out this video, which nerds out on the science and mechanisms of our super turmeric, but super bioavailable. And we would take probably anywhere between two to six a day mm -hmm. during active menstruation, depending on the severity of cramping and pain. And then the next one that we would look to is actually proteolytic enzymes. So especially if we know that we've dealt with fibroids or if we have estrogen dominance and the population of perimenopausal women will tend to see thickening of the uterine lining. And as that wall thickens, that means that there's more to shed, which can mean heavier bleeding or more cramping or clotting. So proteolytic enzymes actually have been shown in clinical studies to support fertility by making the uterus more inhabitable and reducing the tissue inflammation or the thickening of the tissue and can also help then with the impact of shedding your uterine lining. So you might take inflammazyme throughout your cycle, kind of like I talked about with the omega-3s. You might take two at rise, two at bed if you deal with fibroids or uterine thickening. And then if not, you might only take it during the menstrual cycle to help with the pain and inflammation. And that would be at about four to six. And if you were taking it as a baseline, you would just go ahead and up that dosage. 
This includes proteolytic enzymes as well as anti-inflammatory botanicals. So we have here also as a food as medicine support, tropical fruit. We think of bromelain as a compound that helps to break down on a tissue level that inflammatory buildup. Yes, so maybe making our um, green mango smoothie or mm -hmm. incorporating some pineapple into the diet during this time. Absolutely. And then next up, magnesium is a big area of focus. So there's a reason that you crave chocolate on your cycle because chocolate is a potent source of magnesium and magnesium is going to help to relieve painful cramping as well as headaches that we might get with our cycle. So eating chocolate would be one way mm -hmm. to do that. But for more potent support, we might want to take an Epsom salt bath or use a topical magnesium gel or spray. And then our relax and regulate is a fabulous tool to have throughout your menstrual cycle and throughout your entire life, I think, <laughs> right? Um, one scoop at night. And then on those first couple of days of your period, if you are prone to cramping or headaches, we might double down and take two scoops at night to help with symptom relief. Yes, and as I spoke to earlier, when we're dealing with teens or early 20s and we have painful periods or hormone imbalance seen through acne or dysregulated cycle, we really look at the other nutrient in our Relax and Regulate, myo-inositol. Myo-inositol helps with intracellular signaling, insulin sensitivity, which we often see with PCOS, insulin resistance, and myo-inositol is known to support healthy, regulated ovulation. So this is a great way to kind of harness and regulate women's hormones throughout the month ongoing, like you said, but then that magnesium bisglycinate helps with that cramping as an extra boost for pain. Yes, totally. Next up, we want to focus on supporting your iron stores. So we want to ensure that all women who are cycling are taking a multivitamin that has a good amount of bioavailable chelated iron, either our multi-avail mama supplement or our multi-defense with iron for these women. And then you keep that in the entire month, um, but during your menstrual cycle, we want to focus on blood building foods. So this would be a great time to reach for grass-fed steak or grass-fed ground beef or even an organ blend to incorporate a mm -hmm. little bit more iron and B vitamins. And then things like nettle tea. I actually used nettle tea throughout my entire pregnancy, my second pregnancy, and I never went into iron deficiency during that pregnancy where I did with my first. Excellent. And the last nutrient of focus we would look at is vitamin C. Vitamin C actually can help to support progesterone levels. And often when we're having a painful menstrual cycle or an irregular cycle, or maybe we start with spotting before we actually start a cycle, these can be indicators of progesterone deficiency. Again, it takes a progesterone increase and drop to create that uterine lining to shed. And so if you don't get an ample peak of progesterone, we can see issues during that luteal phase, the end of the cycle, where we can see more PMS-like symptoms. So vitamin C is a great way to ensure as an antioxidant that there's going to be less inflammation during the menstrual cycle, but throughout the cycle, that vitamin C can help to stabilize mood and to support healthy progesterone production. We've actually seen research where just 750 milligrams, which is just over one capsule of our Bio C Plus, so I would take two, but that dosage has been shown to increase progesterone levels up to 77%, which is really significant. All right, so hopefully we've given you some fun ways to apply food as medicine to offset painful periods and considerations for supplement strategy. I also hope that after today's video, you have a little bit more appreciation for all of the work that your body's doing every monthly cycle. Yes, totally. And stay tuned because we're going to actually do another video in our next release where we focus on all four phases of your menstrual cycle and how you can best support them. Be sure to like and subscribe so that you stay up to date on all of our Food as Medicine releases. Cool fun facts about your menstrual cycle and you'll maybe give it a little bit more endearing support. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Give fun facts, some, endearing. Some maybe you'll love bleeding a little bit more this time. Um, what am I trying to say? Maybe you'll appreciate. Okay, yeah. Okay. So